Omaze for sponsoring today's video. You can learn more at omaze.com slash Catherine Steele. Hi friends, happy new year! The world is on fire again! Or rather, the world is on fire still, because it never really went out. Kinda like a continuation of the pre-existing garbage fire, so it's kinda like a sequel. Garbage fire 2, electric boogaloo! We are two seconds into the new year, and the theater world is already bursting with updates. And a lot of it is not great news. We've got a lot of cancellations and closures and breaking news announcements to cover, so... Let's jump into it. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi! My name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. Join a cult, cross that off the resolution list. Question of the day, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Let me know. I have a couple of resolutions, but I definitely want to practice the piano more often and I want to stage a two-man immersive production of Starlight Express starring Aaron Tveit and the goat from Once on this Island. Share your resolutions in the comments down below. Real quick, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Hi! This video is sponsored by Omaze. They give away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating to chosen charities all across the world. Their approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus resources on serving the needs of their communities. Because Omaze supplies the swag. Donate $10 and you're entered for the chance to win in incredible prizes. Like right now, you could win this insanely gorgeous $4.3 million dream home right here in Los Angeles. It's got a movie theater, pool, hot tub, basketball court, putting green, you name it. Absolutely stunning. And best of all, you'll be supporting a great cause at the same time. Omaze is fundraising for Rebuilding Together, an organization devoted to repairing the homes of veterans, people with disabilities, and neighbors with low income. Additionally, Rebuilding Together is instrumental in recovery efforts after natural disasters, helping residents rebuild their homes and lives. So if you want to support this great cause while entering for the chance to win the house of your dreams, head to omaze.com slash Catherine Steele. Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this segment. And now, Back to the video. So it's been a minute since we've discussed the Broadway shutdown, more than half a year since our last update video. I was thinking and hoping that that would be the final installment, but here we go again. I'll link all the videos down below if you want to get fully caught up on the situation. But if you need a refresher, here's a quick recap. Broadway went dark on March 12th, 2020 in response to the global pandemic. During this time, we saw a rise in streaming productions and at-home concerts and fan-made musicals. We had some success and starts and stops with outdoor and reduced capacity productions, and some of them got really creative. Notably, the UK tour of Six was converted into a drive-in experience, but ultimately theatre ceased to exist for a while, at least in the way we're used to. Finally, Broadway reopened at the beginning of September 2021 after being shut down for nearly a year and a half. Shows began reopening at their own pace, kind of staggering throughout the fall. Andrew Lloyd Webber DJed the phantom reopening party. Things were starting to look up. And then we move later into the fall and winter. Breakthrough cases cause positive testing throughout companies. Shows begin canceling performances at an increasingly frequent rate. And now we're caught up to today. Although the Broadway League stated that they wouldn't consider another industry-wide shutdown, it seems that a self-imposed semi-shutdown may be on the horizon anyway. In a major move, Mrs. Doubtfire the Musical has announced that they will suspend all performances through March 14th. Their new musical that just opened this season earlier on Broadway and the producers have said that their decision to take this hiatus is in order to keep the show afloat. Which absolutely makes sense. And I think more productions might follow suit. The West End productions of both Mary Poppins and The Phantom of the Opera have chosen to reduce their weekly number of performances. And DJ Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cinderella has been delayed through February. Another sign things may be slowing down again in a big way, we've got breaking news delays from tons of big productions. The highly anticipated musical adaption of The Notebook, composed by Ingrid Michaelson, has now been delayed. Originally, the musical was set to premiere in Chicago this March, but has now been postponed to next autumn. The new Broadway musical Paradise Square has delayed its previews and opening night. Same with the off-Broadway revival of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and the national tour of Moulin Rouge. Broadway Con has been rescheduled for the summer. The Grammy awards have been postponed indefinitely. They didn't even give us a new date. They were just like, nope, 
not happening. And we haven't even considered all of the shows that have had to end their runs early. We've got closing announcements from Flying Over Sunset, Jagged Little Pill, Trevor, Winnie the Pooh, Thoughts of a Colored Man, The Alchemist, and so many more. The fact that we've had to collectively endure not one, but two waitress closures. Something I wanted to mention, I guess a lot of anger over the canceled performances have been directed toward the actors. Please don't blame them. They have very stringent safety and testing protocols and they're doing their best. In that vein, president of the Broadway League Charlotte St. Martin recently issued an apology to swings and understudies. In a recent interview, it was insinuated that a lack of experienced cover performers were at least partially to blame for the Broadway shutdown, which deeply hurt a lot of arts workers and for the record is absolutely not true. There may be a lack of available employees at a certain production at a certain time, but there is certainly not a lack of talent or experience in the industry as a whole. Time to turn on some lights. It gets dark so early now. Better. The shutdown doesn't just affect Broadway or the West End, it affects everyone worldwide. And it's on every scale too, not just the tip top productions. And I just keep thinking about closures on a local level. Are regional and community theaters going dark? School plays and spring musicals getting canceled? So many of my friends who work in the arts have their lives and careers just up in the air indefinitely. Things are scary and unpredictable and it kind of feels like a season finale cliffhanger in the worst way possible. I'm just saying that it's a tough time. Go easy on yourself. I wanted to give a huge, huge shout out to everyone who keeps these shows going. On stage, backstage, front of house, in the pit, so many people work together to make this happen. The understudies and swings who have been pulling double duty, people who haven't played roles in years, so many former alphabas just absolutely rallying, so many creatives coming together to keep the show going. If there's one thing that's given me hope during this time, it's the resilience of this community. Seeing the way that people can come together has been a real silver lining. Speaking of silver linings, let's talk about some good news. Hamilton and West Side Story's Ariana DeBose will host Saturday Night Live. If you're watching this the day it's uploaded, it's going to be next week's episode. I am so beyond pumped and I am so beyond ready for her to get that Best Supporting Actress nomination. In a now viral moment, Hugh Jackman, who stars in The Music Man, used his star power to shine a spotlight on the mega talented understudies and swings. During the fourth preview of The Music Man, swing Kathy Voitko went on for Sutton Foster's Marion Peru. In an absolutely rock star move, she had her first rehearsal as Marion at 1 p.m. and then went on at 8 p.m. Speaking of covers, fan fave Wicked understudy Brittany Johnson will make history as the first black actress to play Glinda full time. Brittany begins performances in her new role this February at the Gershwin Theater on Broadway. I really also wanted to reiterate from past videos about the Broadway shutdown. This is, of course, a developing situation and a complicated one. I certainly don't know what the right answer is. I mean, I want theater to come back. I want people to have their livelihoods back. I also want everyone to be healthy and safe. What I do know is that I love you and I care about you. Please look out for yourself. Get your flu shot, get your booster. And I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts on all of these closures and announcements and updates? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, hit subscribe, join the musical theater internet cult. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring this video. You can learn more at omaze.com slash Katherine Steele. I hope you're having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.